Now your e-mountain bike is a perfect tool for bringing the kids along for the ride, but which piece of equipment should you choose? A trailer, a tow rope, or a child seat? Well today, helping you make up your mind. Right, first up, child seats. Now these come in front or rear mounted options and there's lots of ways that these seats differ to the way they mount to the way they ride. So let's take a look and dive a little bit deeper into the seats. The front mounted bike seat is my favorite option for off-road action for younger children. You've got the protection with them in your arms and it's designed to be ridden in the weighted area of the bike. You can also see what they're up to all of the time, whether or not they've fallen asleep. Now one factor to consider when you're mounting that front mounted child seat onto your e-bike is how it's actually going to fit to your bike. Now a lot of the cheaper style e-bike seats uh, or child seats are going to have a clamp that actually clamps around the head tube of the bike. A lot of the new school e-bikes are going to have integrated headsets meaning it's nice and flush at the top of the bike so that top clamp won't actually fit around the front part of the head tube so just make sure it's actually going to fit. Now the McRide More seat that I've got on this bike actually comes with a grooved spacer that simply slides over the fork steerer and you clamp around that therefore the bars move really nice and smooth and at the other end it's just going to clamp around your dropper seat post so think about how that seat is going to fit on your bike before you buy it. Right, cost, well, this front mounted seat, the McRide More seat that I've got on this bike comes in at 200 pounds or $200, around that kind of money, but it is the limousine of car seats. It's definitely got all the options, that neat mount on the front for the steerer and of course the dropper post. You can get some cheaper options, but those cheaper options, just make sure they're gonna fit on your bike because as I say, a lot of them actually mount around the front of the head tube and can cause some interference when it comes to steering and they won't actually mount on the bike. Another thing to think about is how big your down tube is, how big your bul bulky your battery is because sometimes the leg mounts won't fit around that and also think about the controls on your e-bike something like the specialized with the tcu on the top tube is going to be underneath that seat so all loads of things to think about before you buy that seat so some pros and cons of the front mounted child seat well the pros for it is you've got that weight of the rider where it's meant to be you've got the rider in between your arms meaning that the bike is designed to have that weight centrally in the bike not over the back of the bike so a front mounted seat you've got them right in your arms and i think with them in your arms it gives them a bit of better protection as well around them you know what they're doing they're not stuck on the back of the bike looking around you trying to put you off balance they're actually there and they're really engaged in the ride they can see all the jumps coming they can see the turns they can see everything they've got the wind in their face and it's really engaged riding experience Lastly, I think the storage and the lightweightness of this package. I mean, storage wise, you can fold it up, stick it on a hook in the shed and be done with it, not tripping over it. And when it comes to transforming your bike back into its normal state, simply a case of whipping that child seat off, sticking it away. You can have your normal bike back without taking wheels off and different brackets, things like that. The front mounted seat is a really good option. Right, cons of the front mounted seat. Well, there isn't too many. The only ones that I can think of, obviously, if it becomes horrible weather and it starts raining, they are out in the elements and you can get bugs in their eyes, things like that. But that's part of mountain biking, right? I think the other one is that if you're doing a big, big ride, sometimes depending on how big your child is, whether you have that seat mounted forward or backwards, if it's mounted quite far backwards, you tend to ride a bit knees out. So sometimes a bit knees out riding. If you're doing quite a few miles, that isn't that comfortable. But aside from that, that's the only cons I can think of. Then there is, of course, rear seats. Now, price-wise, these come in anything from around £30 all the way up to about £150. So there's a wide, wide range of prices for these. But the way they mount onto your e-bike is going to be pretty similar. Now, a lot of them are going to clamp around the seat post. Now, a lot of e-mountain bikes are going to have a dropper seat post. So you need to ask yourself, are you comfortable with all that weight of that child going through your dropper seat post? Now, so if you are gonna be doing it quite regularly, you might be able to switch to a solid seat post. That might make things a little bit more bearable, but clamping a dropper seat post and then putting a child on it, something you definitely wanna consider. Now, another thing to consider when running a rear child seat on your e-mountain bike is how slack your seat tube is. If it is quite slack, then the pitch of that child seat is gonna be dropped back quite dramatically. These are designed primarily to be ridden on hardtail bikes. So if you're riding a hardtail e-bike, it isn't such a problem. Another thing that can happen as well is if you've got a rear suspension or a full suspension bike, that child seat will go down and potentially buzz on the tire if there's any suspension movement. So there's quite a few things to think about with those rear child seats. Let's talk about a few of the pros and cons. Well, I think the pros of the rear child seat is the expense. They're not very expensive, so you can get that child mobile for not a lot of cash. 
and obviously storing it, they're not that big either, and they're quite lightweight, so that's another plus point. There are a few cons when it comes to running a rear child seat. First up is that they're not off-road certified, and the reason we ride e-mountain bikes is to go off-road, right? You don't want to be riding around on the tarmac. You can get a few that are uh, off-road certified, but the majority aren't, so just go careful when you're choosing that option. Next up is the potential damage you could do do to your dropper seat post. A lot of weight and a lot of stress going through that, something you want to consider. Next up is that they're not really engaged in the ride. Um, you kind of quite often find your little one asleep in the child seat, which isn't a good thing, meaning they're not engaged in the ride. They can't really feel or see much of what's going on. Then of course, there's all that weight on the back of the bike. Now the weight on the back of the bike isn't a good thing, especially if you're riding off-road, can lead to that front wheel sliding out. And I think when you're on the road as well, they kind of tend to lean around and try and look over your shoulder and that can potentially upset the balance of that bike. So there's a lot of different options there, front or rear mounted seats. Take a look and see which one suits you. Something you might want to consider if you've got more than one child is going to be a trailer to put your kids in for when you go out riding. Now these are great if you're just going to be on paved surfaces. They can fit two, sometimes three children inside uh, some of these trailers. Price-wise, they come in from £100 all the way up to about £500 for that Rolls-Royce of trailers. Now, how they fix the bike is usually going to be by the rear wheel axle. Now, a lot of the cheaper trailers are designed to be ridden with nutted or quick-release axles, something that your e-bike doesn't have. What it does have is a through axle. Now, these are usually 12 by 148 millimeters. So just make sure that the trailer that you're buying is going to be compatible with your e-bike. Now one of the great things about a trailer is the amount of protection that it provides. If you were to crash, usually the trailer will stay upright. If it's a tame crash and you fall off to the side, the trailer should remain on two wheels. Then if it was to roll over, you have got a roll cage to protect your children and they're actually going to be strapped in, so they are going to be pretty safe. And as for the elements, when you're out there in the rain, well, it doesn't get much better than this. You've got a full waterproof cover, you've got a rain screen on the front that can be zipped up and put out of the way, and then you've got a bug screen. So that's gonna protect you from all the grit and the mud that's gonna be firing up off the back wheel. So a lot of protection, and you're protected from the rain. What's not to, to like about that? Now, one thing you might notice about the bike trailer is how wide it is. Now, this is great if you're riding out and about on the road. It really gets you noticed and it makes drivers give you a big wide berth when it comes to overtaking. You certainly can't get missed with this big flag on the back. Now, the only downside to this is if when you're riding off-road, if you want to ride single track trails, then you're going to get snagged up absolutely everywhere. All those wheels are going to pick up every rock, root, and narrow gap between the trees. So off-road riding isn't really possible with a trailer. You really need to think about the lines you're taking. Even on the road, you need to be quite a far distance out on the road compared to where you'd usually ride on the bike. So it's all worth taking that into consideration when thinking about a trailer. Now, one thing you will notice when riding with a trailer on the road is the drag of it. It is quite light, but there's extra drag and the friction of a couple of wheels you will definitely notice, especially if you get two kids in there. So you definitely need to be boosting that bike up quite a bit, maybe riding in a trail or even turbo mode on the hills. Now looking at the size of it, it is quite a bulky unit, but they've been quite clever with the designs. A lot of these trailers are actually going to fold down quite nice, meaning that when it comes to storing it in the shed, the wheels are going to pop off and it is going to fold up nice and flat. Right, time to talk a few pros and cons of the trailer. Well, I th think first up, it's got to be protection. Now, obviously you're protected from the elements and you're protected from a potential accident as well. You've got a strong roll cage and if you were to topple over, the trailer is going to remain upright too. Then of course there is carrying extras. If you've just got one child, then maybe you could stick a balance bike in there, tow them for a bit, and then you could jump on the balance bike, ride for a little bit, then jump back in the trailer once they're tired. Then if they are tired, you can obviously go for a sleep in there quite nicely. It's like look pretty luxurious in there, I think, being strapped in, being towed along. What's better than that? And of course, there's got to be a few cons with the bike trailer. Well, first up is obviously the drag that I talked about earlier. They are, do take a lot of energy to pull one of these things along, especially with two kids in there. Then there's the size of them. They are quite big and bulky to store and drag around, meaning off-road use isn't really on with one of these. They, they've got no suspension, so they do rattle around. Then there's expense. They can be very expensive. This is a cheap one at £100. As I mentioned, they do go up to £500. Then, of course, storage. That's the last thing. That is definitely a con. But definitely a great option if you've got two or maybe more kids to bring along for the ride. Oh, and one more thing. They're not tubeless. So either get a decent set of tyres on there or carry a puncture repair kit.
Now something you might want to consider if you've got older children that are riding normal mountain bikes and you're on your e-bike is going to be a tow rope to drag them to the top of the hills and once you're at your top you can disconnect them and let them carry on with their flow. Now we're not talking normal tow ropes like these because they can snag in your front wheel once you lose that tension they can drop into the cassette it can be pretty nasty and we're not talking bungee cords either because I certainly wouldn't want to put my little one's face behind one of these if they were to snap. What we're talking about is one of these proper elasticated tow ropes by the likes of Toei. All they do is connect around the other rider's handlebars, they connect to your seat post, and then you drag them under tension up the hill. They're really great for those older riders who want to get a bit of help to the top of the hills. Now the good thing about these elasticated tow ropes is that they allow quite a nice steady pull up the hill. There's no jerky movements going on. They're also a really good length. So once they're under tension, you can actually follow at quite a good distance and be able to read that terrain which is coming up to you for the following rider, which is quite important when you're being towed. Another thing these ropes are good for is sticking in your backpack, even if you're just going out for a normal e-mountain bike ride in a group, because if one of you gets a bike failure or a motor failure or something like that, these are ideal recovery ropes to tow your mates home. So stick one of these in your backpack. They're available for kids, they're available for adults, they're available for a wide range of uses too. You can even walk your dog with one. Right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the tow rope. Well, I think first up, it's got to be price. Now this comes in at 40 pounds, or around $40 too, so it is pretty cheap. Storage wise, well you can crumple that up and stick it pretty much anywhere. Stick it in your pocket, stick it in your riding pack. It has, uh, you know, it can crumple up pretty much anywhere. And then multiple to multitude of uses. You've got so many uses for this. You can walk your dog with it, you can tow your mate to with it. There's so many uses for the tow rope. Now the cons, well the only cons I can think of is that you can't really use it with younger children. They need to be pretty competent on their bike, but they are really good for even adults or children to be used to be dragging them to the top of the hill with a bit of e-power. So there we are, an absolute multitude of choices for transporting your kids when it comes to hitting the trails or taking them out on the roads. We've got trailers, we've got front seats, we've got rear seats, we've got tow ropes, and there are other options too, like the tag-along bikes that you can tow along behind your bike too. That's another good option. Let us know which device you use to take your kids to the trails if you are doing that already or which one you intend to use after watching the video. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and follow us on social media too. Cheers.